Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. It's all about non-alcoholic beer. I have 19 different non-alcoholic beers here that I've been collecting for a couple of weeks that I wanted to try and it's become a lot more of an epic video than I expected. I also have a non-alcoholic spirits review that I did a couple months ago, so um, I'll leave that linked in the comments below if you wanna check that out. I originally wanted to do a video of non-alcoholic spirits part two plus beers plus wine, but as you can see, there are just so many options on the market that I'm going to be doing different installations. So this is going to be all about non-alcoholic beer. I'm gonna be tasting them in different sections. So I'm going to start with lighter and then I'm gonna move in all the way down to the stouts with some gozas and some wheat beers in between. I'll give you my favorite ones and let's get started. The first category I'm going to try are all German style beers. I have some wheat beers too, but we're gonna to get to those in a little bit. So first up, I'm going to try the Klaus Tauler, which has been around since the 70s. This is probably one of the most ubiquitous non-alcoholic beers that you can find. It's not my favorite. <laughs> it's hoppy, it's got some bitterness, a lot of maltiness. Um, the bubble structure is a little, it's a, it tastes a little flat to me. Um, next up, I have the Bitburger 0.0. I actually like this one a lot better. It tastes less like a fake beer and more like a real beer. Like, I don't know, I think this, I'm not sure exactly how Klaus Teller is made, but there's a bunch of different methods to making non-alcoholic beer. The original way was that you kind of boiled off the alcohol or just heated the beer till the alcohol burned off. Another common way to do it is kind of the same, but they heat it under vacuum distillation so that they can heat it up less so that the alcohol will be distilled off of the beer and not disturb the flavor profile so much as when you're boiling the beer, because that kind of gets rid of a lot of like the more aromatic, fruity kind of flavors of beer. but this is really nice. I almost can't tell that it's not real beer. Next up is Bex, which I also believe has been around for quite a while. I feel like I've seen it at the supermarket for like ever. This one is really good too. It tastes a little flatter than the Bitburger, but it's a little sweeter, which I kind of like. And last but not least is the Erdinger. And this one, I think, has the best bubble structure. I don't know, I'm kind of torn between these two. Um, this one is definitely a little bit sweeter, but it has like that really delicious, like rich maltiness to it. Yeah, I think these two are my top two, the Bitburger and the Erdinger. This one just by a little bit. This is a little on the sweeter side, and I tend to like things that are a little more bitter or hoppy, so. I'm gonna go with the Bitburger on this category. So the next category is very similar to the first category. I just thought I would separate out the German ones, but these are other European style lagers. So I have Buckler and Heineken. These are both from Holland. And then I have Stella, which is Belgian. They're all pretty similar in color. Um, Buckler's been around, I think since the 80s. Um, so this is another OG like the Klaus Taller. And it's pretty good. It's about uh, 0.5 uh, ABV, I believe. And I like it, it's tasty, it's malty, it's really crisp and refreshing. Yeah, this is a great beer for a summer day if you're not drinking. Um, next up, I'm going to try Heineken. So these are actually made both by Heineken. This one is more recent, I think it came out in 2017. Ooh, it's good. It's definitely a little fruitier. I get, um, I get some banana in there, a little more tropical fruit. I haven't had a Heineken in like a million years, so I don't remember what exactly what it tastes like side by side, but this is really good. This is not quite as crisp as the Buckler, but still really refreshing and nice. And lastly, uh, full disclosure, I kind of drink this one all the time. I really love uh, the non-alcoholic Stella. I think it is mighty fine. Super crisp, 
super easy to drink. So it's less malty than the Buckler, but it's still very, it still has some maltiness in there. It's very crisp and light and just really nice, easy drinking beer for weeknights. Mm, it's delicious. I love it. I think my favorite, it's kind of hard to decide because I feel like each of them would be great in different settings. Like if I'm just like wanting to like sit down and drink a beer with other people who are like drinking a beer, I'd probably go with the Stella just because it's like very easy drinking. But if I was eating like barbecue or something like that, I would probably choose the Buckler or the Heineken. But I do, I think I do like the Buckler a little bit more than the Heineken. I wonder if it's that half percent of alcohol that does make a difference. There is a lot of really nice character in the Heineken, but I will say my favorite one is the Stella. So this next category is American style lagers. I know I have one that's more of a Mexican style, but you know, it's in the Americas, so I thought I would include it. Plus I feel like Mexican style beers and American style beers are kind of similar. They're both like supposed to be really crisp and light and refreshing. This one from Athletic Brewing Company, the Cerveza Athletica, is a lot more of a, uh, an amber color than I was expecting. I was expecting more of like a Corona style, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste. It's a lot lighter in flavor than I thought it was going to be. Um, I definitely would love to squeeze a little lime in there. The carbonation seems a little, um, Seems a little light. I would like a little more carbonation there, but the flavor is really good. Next up is Al's. Hmm. This one is super floral, but very clean, like very, I don't really get too much maltiness from it. It's like pretty light. Um, Carbonation is really nice in it. Yeah, this is good, I like this. And last up, I have Bud Heavy Zero. I didn't even know that they made a non-alcoholic and I saw it and I just had to try it. And it tastes like Budweiser. Like it tastes a little bit, a little more watery, but it's really good. I actually really like it. I think out of this category, Budweiser wins. It's my favorite. It's the king of non-alcoholic beers. It's um, a little sweet, a little malty, very nicely balanced. Yeah, it's very light on the hops. I like this a lot. This next category is wheat beers slash fruity beers. Um, I guess I shouldn't have really included uh, the Weinstefaner in here, but because it's typically a wheat beer, I thought I would just add it, and I only have four glasses. So there you go. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Weinstefaner. Actually, no, it is a wheat beer. It's definitely a wheat beer, and it's delicious. It's probably one of my favorite alcoholic beers. Um, it definitely has a similar taste. It does taste like it's missing something, like it's a little bit watered down. But I think if it was like a bit colder and I had it like in a really nice cold glass, I would probably have a hard time telling the difference. That is really good. Um, next up, I have Klaus Teller, which is their grapefruit plus beer situation. I don't know, sounds like it could be good. I love grapefruit. And it is really good. It tastes like a grapefruit soda, which is essentially what it is. Yeah, not too much maltiness, not too much like, you don't really taste much of a, like the flavors of beer. Like it's not super malty, there's no hops. It's just kind of like really easy drinking, like a shandy or something like that. The next one is Florida Vice by Untitled Art. I smell passion fruit immediately, and I taste it immediately. It's absolutely delicious. Wow, this is really good. It's got a, it's a little tart. It's not really sweet. It's mostly tart, lots of passion fruit notes. 
This is really delicious. It kind of reminds me more of a sour than a vice, but I love it. It's delicious. And mm, it's going to be hard to beat. And next up is the Raspberry Goza by Bravas. Definitely get a lot of raspberry right off the bat. Oh, man, that's really good. I love Goza beers. They're like the Gatorade of beers. They're like a little bit salty, but just like super hydrating. This is, this is a hard category because there's, I like so many in there. Um, my least favorite is probably the Klaus Tower, the, the Klaus Tower, <laughs> the Klaus Tower. Um, I also, hmm, this is really tough. I don't know which one I like the best. I think, I think I like the Untitled Art the best, but I think that's just because I have such a soft spot for passion fruit. Super fruity, great for the summertime, super crushable. So I think I will go, hmm. All right, well, since this is a beer review, I guess I should go with like my favorite beer. I mean, obviously the, the Weinstefaner is like the most beer-like out of this whole category, but I will say if you want something for like the summertime, like, I don't know, you're having a barbecue or you're having a picnic or something like that. These guys are so good. They're like really nice and fruity and perfect and light for like a nice summer day. So I guess I'm gonna go the Weiss, the Weinstefaner, the Goza, and then the Klaus Tower. This category is IPAs or hoppier style beers. I have a, an amber in here that isn't quite classified as an IPA, but I'm including it because it's still pretty hoppy and I think it would go well with, uh, it's a good comparison for the rest of them. I'm going to start with Athletic Brewing Company's Free Wave Hazy IPA. So a hazy IPA just means that it's a little more juicier, a little fruitier, more like tropical fruits than your standard like super resiny IPA. And it definitely is very fruity, very, um, you get a lot of pineapple, like some mango. The hops are very present. It's actually really, really tasty. Of all the Athletic Brewing Company uh, beers I've had so far, this is the best one. Next up is Brooklyn Special Effects IPA. It's actually really light. I was expecting I feel like Brooklyn IPAs are like pretty, I, even Brooklyn Lager I feel like is pretty happy and this is like really, really light in comparison. It still definitely has the, um, like a resiny flavor profile, but it's not super hoppy, but it's good, it's nice. Next up is the Hoppy Amber. Which definitely tastes a bit more like an IPA to me. I actually really like this, it's really tasty. It's very malty, a little sweet. You definitely get the hops in there. But it doesn't like punch you in the face with the hops. It's like really, really well balanced and nice. I really like it. And then Lagunitas, which I really like their alcoholic IPA, so I'm curious to see how this one is. Ooh, it's really good. It's like, it's definitely much lighter um, than the traditional Lagunitas IPA. It doesn't have the alcohol that kind of gives it more of that texture and body, but the carbonation kind of makes up for that in non-alcoholic beers in general. That's why I think non-alcoholic beers are like such a great alternative to alcoholic beers if you're not drinking, but you still want a grown-up drink. Ooh, that's really good. Um, kind of get like some rye and caraway notes in that. It's interesting. Um, I will say my favorite one in this category has to be the Hazy IPA. I think the tropical fruit sold me and I just think it's a really nice balance of bitter, like that really like potent, like hoppy kind of flavor along with some fruit. It's, it's really tasty. I really like it a lot. If you're going for like just a classic old school like IPA, I would think I would go for the Lagunitas. I think that definitely fits the bill more than the rest of them. Um, I think the special effects IPA is, uh, 
is kind of like the most disappointing in this category. Like I don't really get too much out of it. I don't really get like barely any like traditional like IPA tasting notes, which are usually like bold hops. It's like super like can almost be like vegetal, but like very herbaceous. And it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it tastes good, but in the IPA category, I think uh, you could do better. The hoppy amber is also really, really tasty. If you're someone who really likes uh, like a Sam Adams Boston lager, this is a great replacement for that. It's like really sweet. Well, not really sweet, but it's like has that sweet, malty, um, just amber beer kind of flavor profile. Um, just kind of the right amount of hops. It's super balanced, really tasty. Funny enough, Sam Adams does make a non-alcoholic beer, but I have not been able to find it anywhere. So if I do come across it, I'll definitely add it to the review of the blog and maybe put up a short or something. I'm not sure, but I'll keep my eyes open for it. This is the last category, and sadly, I only have one stout, but I mean, it's Guinness. It's delicious. Is there even any other stout that I need to try? If there is, let me know in the comments below. But for now, Oh man, that's really good. Uh, wow. It's coffee, chocolatey. It tastes honestly just like Guinness. Like it's missing something. I guess it's the alcohol, but Guinness is pretty, um, it's pretty low in alcohol anyway. I think it's like only like 4% or something, but it's super creamy. It's still, um, obviously it's still a nitro. Yeah, that's delicious. I have actually been wanting to try this for a really long time. I know that it was originally supposed to come out like a couple of years ago, but I've only really seen it around just pretty much this year. So I'm really uh, happy that this exists because it's delicious. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like almost indiscernible from actual Guinness. Really, really good. Highly recommend if you come across it. Honestly, I've heard that most of the stouts that are non-alcoholic are pretty disappointing, so I decided not to include them. Um, but maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I'll try some uh, later down the line and I'll, I'll add them to the blog post, or maybe I'll do another review. Um, it just seems like there's more and more non-alcoholic options popping up all the time. There's always more beers, more spirits, more wines to discover. So I feel like this series is going to kind of keep snowballing into uh, more and more videos. I've been collecting some non-alcoholic wines that I'm going to try and also some more spirits too. And that's gonna wrap up my non-alcoholic beer review. I hope you guys liked it. Um, there was so much to try here. I hope I did them all justice um, without making this video too, too long. It's such a wide variety of non-alcoholic beers as compared to just a few years ago when you just had like O'Doul's and Klosthaler. So I think it's really, really great that they've opened up the space to include many new techniques in brewing and just like all the different styles of beer. It's just kind of like exploded. And I think all of the, each category had just some stellar, stellar uh, beers. So I hope that you found this video useful. I hope to be doing some more of them soon. But for now, thank you so much for watching and sláinte. Mm -hmm.